Hello friends, welcome back to the discussion of positioning and by this time you would have got an idea on how important positioning is because once you go for a successful positioning exercise, rest of the things are easier because you are sure of the other elements of the product and if you are projecting those rightly and customer also accept those in a similar way which actually he perceives and you also wish for that then things you know gel with each other. It is not a confusing state, it is just the matter of right match of thoughts putting up a particular perspective and image in the minds of the customer. As I suggested last time, let us go through some caselets, some examples and then some more aspects related to positioning. Let us start from you know uh, Accenture and then this example talks of you know the source is given for you here and this example talks about positioning through performance. See Accenture was launched as the administrative accounting group in 1942 and was the consulting arm of accounting firm Arthur Anderson. Anderson Consulting officially adopted the Accenture name and launched a global advertising, marketing and communications campaign targeting senior executives at its clients and prospects, all partners and employees, the media, leading industry analysts, potential recruits and academia. Accenture's brand equity increased 11 percent the first year and the number of firms that inquired about its services increased 350 percent, 350. Accenture believed its differentiator was the ability both to provide innovative ideas, ideas grounded is grounded in business processes as well as IT and the and to execute them. So, so the complete package was offered by them. Competitors, several competitors for uh, you know Accenture were seen as highly specialized at developing strategy where you know other competitors you know uh, there were specific competitors then there were some other competitors in the similar kind of a domain and we have talked about category and classification of products earlier also were seen as highly skilled in technological implementation Accenture wanted to be seen as excelling at both. Now this actually is related to performance positioning which Accenture did they spent quite a lot of money on that in projecting that. In 2002 Accenture unveiled a new positioning statement which reflected its role as a partner that helped create strategies and execute them. The tagline innovation delivered was supported by the statement from innovation to execution Accenture helps accelerate your vision. Now here you know this example this tagline is suggestive of everything which we have been discussing in due course of time in terms of positioning. This is what they wanted for themselves, this is what they were offering, this is what their customer also wanted for them to suggest if they have it rightly. Everything was projected in a right manner, it is it's a uh, whole lot of a story how did they, they would have gone for you know what kind of media choices they would have gone for, what kind of methods they would have utilized to express everything in terms of in, in front of their customers. But here you see this this tagline the words which will generate an image in the minds of the customers are more important for us uh, you know to notice. Today Accenture continues to excel as a global management consulting technology services and outsourcing company you all know that its clients include 99 percent of fortune global 100 and more than three quarters of the fortune global 500. The company ended fiscal 2021 with revenues of $50.5 billion and has a brand value close to $26 billion. Source is mentioned here for you, 
this is taken from a specific source Accenture newsroom reports so website is also given for you the company has delivered high performance delivered positioning high performance delivered so that is the perspective which company has generated I'm sure it is working because the data says so so that is you know the element of positioning which we have tried to discuss as of now and if you are rightly positioning it makes a difference and we will see in our brand discussion in subsequent uh, you know sessions uh, not far away from now wherein we would realize that Accenture kind of organization which was focusing on accounting services became a composite solution providing organization with a high performance delivery and positioning exercise which they engaged worked for them. Oreo positioning through product application. I love that campaign basically which Oreo came up with you know that small kid actually you know licking the cream from within inside Oreo basically and you see uh, uh, a biscuit a cookie you know a product like Oreo which can complement uh, you know the taste of a child along when when the child is motivated to drink milk many children you know they, they, they do not so much like drinking milk and, and even if they like you know they would like to have something along with that Oreo actually studied all of this and then projected it rightly and here remember one thing we are actually talking to a very specific audience although our domain is vast we, we uh, you know we are welcoming almost everyone who likes this kind of a taste but uh, if I am talking of a very specific campaign uh, you know uh, I, I remember that focused on kids. Now, Again, there is a long story and a different story of what kind of media choices they would have gone through, what kind of programs they would have gone through, what kind of characters they would have brought in as far as you know the kids go. But the point is that you know they were talking to kids. So, positioning specifically for a target audience which has very different perspective around them with them is, is uh, you know is, is not easy. So, in launching its Oreo brand of cookies worldwide, Kraft chose to adopt a consistent global positioning. Milk's favorite cookie. That is very, very important for us to understand. Now, although not necessarily, you know, highly relevant in all countries, it did reinforce generally desirable associations like nurturing, caring, and health. And, and for children every parent wants that you know all of us want that. So, at first Kraft tried to sell the US Oreo everywhere when research showed cultural differences in the taste preferences Chinese found the cookies too sweet whereas Indians found them too bitter I, I should not say too bitter it, it was liked by Indians but, but again the taste is different you see. Chinese in taste, Indian taste, Sri Lankan taste and uh, you know other countries there might be slight taste differences basically preference differences and within India also and, and let us not talk about different countries within India also you, you know from north to south and east to west you would find so much of difference and here I am not pointing out that a specific country has a specific taste there is a disclaimer this is just an observation by Oreo uh, you know what kind of a taste that country would have liked actually. So, there is a taste difference the message is clear. So, now you see new formulas were introduced across markets. So, in China the cookie was made less sweet and with different fillings such as green tea, ice cream, you know uh, grape, peach, mango, orange and raspberry and strawberry and so on and it started working. So, they tried to customize the thing and here comes the term customization. So, they tried to customize the product with reference to the tastes of the customers they were targeting in a specific country you go to North India you have to definitely do that and you have to go to South India definitely would be doing that. So, then you know Indonesia has a chocolate and peanut variety Argentina has banana and uh, you know uh, Tuesday Lish varieties 
In an example of reverse innovation craft successfully and reverse innovation uh, we might refer to some other time as well, craft successfully introduced some of these flavors into other countries also, wherein they thought that these can be thought of as a newer flavor and would be accepted and uh, their, their efforts uh, you know they, they uh, brought in results. The company also tailors it mar its marketing efforts to better connect with local consumers. Kraft chose to position Oreo cookies by highlighting the application of its product twist, lick and dung and you know that worked. In India, Kraft customized according to the tastes of Indian children and Indian you know uh, target customer and it worked very well kind of. So, although India uh, people like you know different kinds of tastes, so, so Kraft would have done several kinds of customization. I have to uh, you know uh, taste this uh, once more to, to find out what I am talking of at this moment. If you can do it uh, after just watching this video and then try this out with milk or tea if you want. So, then comes in reverse positioning. Now, as I said, as I promised that uh, there are some elements of uh, you know uh, positioning which uh, you know sort of actually uh, are, are you know give us a view from the other side. That is you know one of those is reverse positioning. Reverse positioners assume that although customers do want something more than the baseline product, they do not necessarily want an endless parade of new features. This is an interesting article written by Moon and uh, she is a professor at Harvard uh, at, at the time uh, definitely she was professor at Harvard, Harvard Business School and then the, the article title is break free from the product life cycle. So, uh, you know uh, that was published in 2005, a very interesting article and, and wherein she gives a very interesting view on you know. Uh, reverse positioning. So, she says that uh, you know uh, it is not always that we want incremental changes uh, in, in the products to, to you know add on more features always. So, so they you know uh, when they do not necessarily want an endless parade of new features, they shed you know many many uh, manufacturers they shed product features which industry considered as sacred as she says means which have been taken as an important part which must be there. So, some manufacturers or producers or product managers should I say try to shelf those off. Once a product is returned to its baseline state, reverse positioners supplement the stripped down product with one or more carefully selected attributes that would typically be found only in a highly augmented product. When we are having this kind of a discussion, I am sure expected product, augmented product comes to your mind and I just want you to recall that we discussed this that after a particular stage you know uh, the, the basic product when goes towards expected product and the expected feature becomes the basic feature because you know customer expectation rises. Same happens with the augmented product becomes the expected product because customer expectation rises further and this, this uh, article also hints upon this kind of an element which we have discussed. So, it is very interesting and uh, you know uh, engrossing article you must read that. The, uh, so, so this method allows them to assume a new position you know as the article further says that this method allows the positioners, reverse positioners to assume a new position within the category and move backwards from maturity to growth position on a product life cycle. I will be talking about product life cycle in due course of time, but just for your understanding you know the product has been growing after a particular stage customer you know uh, they, they uh, I should not say. Uh, get fixed, but they get mature that is number you know slightly gets stabilized. 
but what do you want as a product manager you want that number to still grow so that is where you go for this reverse positioning thing basically and you see for example ikea now there are some other furniture brands which we have been referring to so so and, and on the other side ikea let's let's take a brief comparison you know other furniture brands wherein they you know they compete through varied inventories assuring their favorites and unique pieces you know over eager salesmen salesmen are never over eager salesmen are zealous actually salesmen are one of the most hard working people in whole of the marketing uh, you know uh, kind of uh, value chain and i salute them because they are the people who exert most so you know uh, eager salesmen humble salesmen ready to visualize and help customers imagine how chosen furniture will look at their homes delivery uh you know delivering the new and sometimes you know taking away the old instilling the idea in consumers mind that furniture is designed to last forever so that is conventionally you know when when you are adding on features when you are exerting on your sales efforts when you are actually adding on value to the whole transaction that is you know we will take away your old furniture and we will put up the new furniture in in your place you don't have to touch it and you don't have to do anything i can did what i gave brought in you know a limited variety they said no we have these specific features although ikea has huge variety as a company you know believe me go to their website and you would realize that but ikea started projecting them with limited options because they realized that customers would choose within a limited frame and they were talking of a diff, you know a specific target segment which which probably would have been a larger audience for a common usage or so on so i am not talking of what idea targeted i am talking of how idea thought of not going in a conventional mode of a linear progression uh, you know uh, in in terms of uh, uh, positioning themselves throughout the life cycle of a product and life cycle yet you have to see so just bear with me till then now you see then they did not go for in store assistance they said that people are rational and you know uh, intelligent enough to think come and uh, think of what they need and there are limited choices so people would definitely you know analyze those then there were no delivery options you have to carry your boxes by yourself and and i have talked about in earlier discussions that ikea actually focused upon rectangular boxes which are easy to be carried and taken in your cars and you know and and then there is a methodology wherein you can fix the furniture by yourself so you know you can assemble that by yourself what ikea is doing ikea is actually cutting off on things which are not so much needed by the customers in a linear progression they you know uh, kind of uh, are thinking in terms of something which is related to blue ocean strategy as well i would not go into that i'm just hinting you here that uh, this is a perspective which is uh, you know evident in several discussions around blue ocean strategy so where it talks about uncontested market space and this article also refers to the term uncontested market space how ikea repositioned themselves ikea skillfully reverse position themselves by supplementing you know uh, a value proposition with a store environment and services its stores they have an airy ultra modern look customers can drop off their children with a beautifully designed company operated daycare center while they shop so again these are important features you know and then you see again that that reminds me of blue ocean strategy they can stop for lunch at a delightful cafe that serves delicacies they can purchase items besides furniture brightly colored housewares and cleverly designed toys that are not available at most other furniture stores so you see that is how they are attracting uh, you know kind of uh, uncontested market space or the customers which would be looking 
for many things apart from the furniture or the customers who would be looking for specifics in furnitures along with some other things. So, that is that is how you know the beauty of repositioning and many a times reverse positioning comes into being. Breakaway positioning, marketers leverage the new categories conventions to change both how products are consumed and with whom they compete. Products communicate their category memberships in many ways through their design, distribution channels, promotions and pricing. By manipulating these cues, a firm can change how consumers frame a product and therefore, how they respond to it. And when I say manipulating these means recalibrating, you know, readjusting those things. It, it, it should be taken with a very positive connotation and it is not a, anything related to deception or deceiving the customer because at the end of the day customer trust is the most valuable thing uh, in, in, you know, in marketing basically. And it is the only reason through which uh, an organization can rise and rise for a longer time should I say. So, you see instead of seeing the breakaway product as simply an alternative to others in its category consumers perceive it as altogether a different you know product as these marketing mix elements cue customers to mentally categorize the offerings in a certain way. That means, you have been taken as a part of one category and then you actually are projecting yourself with a different category perspective now onwards. That means, you are breaking away from that categorization altogether. Now, that is an interesting thing because here one very important thing which you would have realized by now while you know uh, listening to these watching these videos as a consumer yourself that if you have a specific positioning of a product in your mind, repositioning the product is a very difficult part. And that we have seen in case of Xerox for example and, and many other products for that matter. So, so, if you try to reposition the product that might hamper the existing image and would not be able to successfully create a new image in the minds of the customers. And you see deception is again not uh, advisable and good marketers never do that. Breaking the trust is bad and that is detrimental. So, then you see break away positioning actually is a sort of repositioning exercise while not distorting the existing image actually and then it is a, a very interesting kind of a thing which we are uh, you know referring to here. This strategy also allows the product to shift backward on the life cycle curve from maturity to growth. Again I am referring to life cycle. I will be talking elaboratively on that subject in the subsequent discussions. But till then just remember that product is growing in terms of number of customers and sales volume and by the time it matures. So, how to bring it back to the trajectory of growth that is adding on number of customers or adding on the purchase of product uh, by the same customer that is repeated purchase. So, that is where break breaking uh, or, or you know break away positioning I should say comes in handy. So, it can disrupt both the category it has left and the one it has affiliated with particularly if someone begins to emulate the break away uh, strategy. Right? So, so, that can also be you know uh, associated with uh, our discussion basically. One thing which is very important is that a product manager never wants to lose upon what he has and wants to gain other customers basically. And that is where you know repositioning and recalibration and you know reverse positioning many a times and breakaway positioning and these all these things they, they come to us. Swatch, again you see it is it is a wonderful example, it is a very successful example. You see before swatch 
was launched in 1983, Swiss watches were marketed as the form of jewelry or as the author says, you know, in this article, it's a wonderful example and then you can visit the website of Swatch and other Swiss watches basically. So, they were specific watches with ha having so many elements and you know, uh, so many aspects to, uh, differentiating aspects to uh, the products. They were serious, enduring, expensive and discreetly promoted as the author says. Swatch changed all that by defining its watches as playful fashion accessories. So, from jewelry perspective to fashion accessories, now that is where breakaway uh, you know positioning comes in. And here I want to necessarily man mention that although Swatch would have broken away from a category that would have you know disrupted that particular image which Swatch would have carried earlier if they, you know they were in that market and they are coming to a different category by you know repositioning themselves. But again it is not necessary that the customers they were targeting earlier would not be buying Swatch now. So, so that is you see uh, that is an adding on exercise many a times while while leaving one type of a customer and going to the other customer. So, so it, it is not that although the proportion the ratio might change because customer who is purchasing watches for being a jewelry also can purchase watches for as being a fashion accessory. They inspired impulse buying, customers often would purchase half a dozen in different designs because the prices are low. Swatches breakaway positioning also disrupted the watch category by creating a fashion accessory you know as a sub category. Then several other manufacturers they also started projecting themselves emphasizingly in this uh, you know category wherein you know Timex came up with such watches, Citizen also came up with such watch, wa uh, watches and you know Calvin Klein and Coach also came up with some you know uh, similar kinds of watches and, and it is a different story how did they reduce the price so much. It is very interesting I might be referring to that story some, some uh, you know uh, some time later in some uh, other parts of our discussion and so on. So, uh, and then comes in a concept of stealth positioning as the author explains. Consumers may feel intimidated by products in the category as can be the case with new technologies. They may be skeptical of the products because previous offerings have failed to live up to the expectations or they may have personal objections to the products or companies in the category or probably those products which have been launched earlier were not so handy or not so user friendly means that particular category uh, has uh, you know uh, uh, an image which is not so smooth in the minds of the customers. Their users they definitely are purchasing that anyways, but, but again when you are talking of growing that particular uh, you know segment or market there you know to put up a user friendly image. Uh, is not so easy many a times because that category is not enjoying that kind of an image. So, through this strategy called stealth positioning, companies can position products into the market and gain acceptance that might otherwise prove uh, you know uh, not so fruitful or elusive. This strategy can give products a fresh run at the life cycle and keep the uh, you know uh, keep them from languishing or drying outright or you know dying outright sorry uh, in the introduction phase. Then author extends a caution that there is an important difference between stealth positioning and deceit in ethical and economic sense. When used thoughtfully stealth positioning is a legitimate way to diffuse prejudice about a product or a company and encourage acceptance and deliver value to customers. As I said trust is the most important thing. But the strategy can backfire if consumers discover that a company used the technique to cheat them by exploring their naivety. So, it is not an exercise to actually generate a distrust amongst customers or to deceive them or, or to you know uh, uh, use deception. It is actually putting up you know uh, a different perspective which category may not be enjoying up till now. And you see that is a difficult thing for one to do, but 
it is many a times compulsion for you because you have that kind of a product and you have to make it successful. And you see product manager knows the worth of that product, product manager you know uh, understands uh, the, the potential of that product. And remember we talked about, about uh, uh, potential when we were talking of you know expected product, augmented product, potential product and so on, Sony Xbox is one of those examples. And this case, uh, this, this article actually mentions uh, the, the you know Sony Xbox. And again the example to substantiate stealth positioning is Sony's IBO as given by the author AIBO. You see they uh, projected this product with again you know stealth strategy to gain a foothold in nascent household robot category. You see household robots is a developing category, there are several reservations which people carry in their mind that how a robot would solve their problems. And Sony has a product which has to be tested also, which has to be sold also and then they want to know that what next can be done and that is what IBO story is. So, Sony had spent tens of millions of dollars to develop the first household robot with the goal of seizing a leadership position in the emerging field against formidable com competitors which are huge as far as their stature, technological abilities and so on. You know, organizations like Honda, Toyota and Matsushita. So, Sony knew that marketing uh, and you know unreliable human like household robot that could not handle even simple cores was sure to backfire. Means people would not find it you know useful if you project the usage actually. So, I would not say that you know uh, unreliable or would not say you know uh, somehow away from being human like robots are robots for that matter. So, uh, you know author describes it that way, but, but uh, you, you can interpret it in your own way as well. So, see rather than setting consumers uh, or uh, you know uh, then uh, you know set consumers up to uh, be disappointed by an inadequate household robot means rather than disappointing consumers. Sony positioned the product as a lovable, but otherwise you know a general product basically. So, you see a lovable robot inside your house that is the positioning. Now, you see the point is that if you will project the category of a useful robot, robot uh, then it might not work. So, you are actually using stealth positioning as suggested by uh, the author here in this article to reach to the household, then only you would be able to know that what usage is conceived or expected in future by the customer or if they are happy with whatever is being offered. So, although you know unpredictable uh, AIBO IBO was an immediate hit in its first two years on the market Sony sold out its limited production of 100,000 units. So, that is where right positioning even if in uh, you know uh, through a method of uh, uh, being referred to as stealth positioning is done. If it is done rightly then product works actually and that is what positioning is, that is what the magic of positioning is and that is what we have to keep in our minds that product manager after having a particular product which he is assured of has to position rightly for the consumer. Just keep this thought in mind, keep dwelling upon the discussions we have been having up till now and I will be catching up with you in the next session with yet again a very interesting concept and a strategy in terms of product management. Till then, goodbye.